A fan favorite wants to return to Atlanta, so we're going to break that down. Plus, Bleacher Report suggested the Falcons go out and sign Yannick Ngakwe. A bit of a, has it been eight seconds so far in the video yet, Tex? Okay, great. I can swear now. No shit, Sherlock. YouTube gets mad if you do it within the first eight seconds. So we're going to break that down on today's show. But first things first, shout out time for those of you that shared our video over on Twitter and tag producer Roly, Brody Brown, and Wood Harris. Really appreciate you guys helping us grow this channel by sharing our content over on Twitter. If you have not already done that, Give it a shot. Share it on Twitter. You can tag Producer Rolly. We'll get the instructions on screen for you guys so you know what to do. But it's very simple. You click the share button, select the Twitter icon, tag Producer Rolly. I'll move my arm at Nick underscore Roloff. And then, boom, we will get you a shout out on a future Falcons today. Now, let's jump into today's show. And I want to talk about Mohamed Sanu potentially returning to Atlanta. So I know it's a bit hard to read, so I'll verbalize it for you. But there was a Twitter thread about the Falcons maybe adding some more wide receivers. And this Jab Johns guy said, Real talk, I would love for Julio Jones or Mohamed Sanu to come back and be wide, re wide receiver three and give these young guys some knowledge. And Mohamed Sanu at the bottom of that thread said, couldn't agree more. So we've got some, uh, you know, it's got some buzz out there about Sanu coming back to Atlanta. So Miles Garrett tweeted out, former Falcons wide receiver and fan favorite Mohamed Sanu seems to be open for an Atlanta reunion. And Sanu responded to that tweet saying, I'm here for it. Now, I'll say it now, and unfortunately it's not really what Mohamed Sanu probably wants to hear. Um, I'm not shocked that he wants to come back to the Atlanta Falcons. He wants to come back to the NFL. I don't know if Atlanta wants to have Mohamed Sanu come back at this point in his career. So the Falcons still need wide receiver help. And honestly, this will be one of those things we look back on if the season starts to go down the drain because something happens to Drake London, we're going to know who kind of blame, right? And that'll be Terry Fontenot for not doing all that great of a job in the offseason, addressing what was sort of a big need going into the offseason and here's what they did in free agency, right? You can see the depth chart. They added Matt Collins and Scotty Miller. Nice guys. Uh, good hair for Matt Collins. Scotty Miller seems like a cool dude. Seems like he brings an extra case of beer to the party. But if, God forbid, Drake London were to miss some time, like this team is already going to be very reliant on the ground game. I would hate to see Bijan Robinson maybe get stuffed a little bit because it's the worst kept secret in the NFL. Atlanta's going to run it first, second, and third down because Desmond Ritter is a fringe starting quarterback and his top two wide receivers are Mac Hollins and Scotty Miller. So be the GM. Would you want to re-sign the fan favorite Muhammad Sanu? S for sign or P for pass? I want to know what you're thinking. So let me know in the comment section below. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Sanu did not play last season. The season prior, only eight games with the 49ers. In 2020, he was with the 49ers and the Lions, and he played 100, uh, excuse me, 10 games, 187 yards, one score. You go back a little further, when he was traded from Atlanta to New England, he had 520 yards that year and two touchdowns, but he had a long and very successful career in Atlanta prior to that. 53 games played, 14 touchdowns, 2,500 yards. He is the definition of name a random Falcon and a fan favorite that if you just go box score hunting, it might not size up all that well. But we're talking about Mohamed Sanu. He was beloved in Atlanta. And I think the Falcons could stand to add another wide receiver. Is he going to come in here and turn this uh, boat around? Probably not, like in terms of the wide receiver room. Like, you're not going to start winning games because of Sanu, but you definitely get better, I think. You got you to you take, take a shot at it. How about that? Now, he also offers you, as we know, some versatility in the passing game. So if uh, Arthur Smith wants to hop into his trick bag, 7 for 8 in his career, it's a pretty good completion percentage. Like, that's got to be an NFL record right there. High completion percentage, 233 yards, 4 touchdowns. So if Desmond Ritter doesn't work out... That's your, that's your new backup quarterback right there. Sorry, Taylor Heineke. But honestly, real talk for a second. Why not bring Sanu in? Can anyone give me a good reason why not bring him in, at least for training camp? If he doesn't make the 53-man roster because he's not in good shape, fine, so be it. But I remember last year, 
when T.Y. Hilton did not get signed. And we were like, oh, I guess T.Y. Hilton's washed. Then Dallas signed him in, like, November. And he was immediately their second-best wide receiver. And that was after the rest of the wide receiver room had a whole season building chemistry and getting on the same page with Dak Prescott and whatnot. And T.Y. Hilton, like, Gallup is better, but he was hurt last year. But the point remains, I mean, is this room going to get worse with Sanu? No. Worst case scenario, he is a camp body. He does not make the 53-man roster, and he gives some pointers and some tips and some tricks to Drake London, Matt Collins, and Scotty Miller. Best case scenario, I don't know, he finds the fountain of youth, and he gets three, 400 yards out of him as a th- wide receiver three in a run-first offense. I just don't see a downside to bringing back Sanu. So that's why I would like to see Sanu come back. If you agree with me and you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe. If you don't agree with me, you can still subscribe and you can troll me in the comment section. But we're trying to reach our next goal here at the channel, 12,500 subscribers. We just crossed over 12K. So thank you so much to everyone who subscribed. Honestly, it means a ton to producer Roly and I. We try to get you guys Falcons content as, as much as possible. And getting more subscribers gets us more studio space. So really appreciate all of our subscribers here. Second half of the show, I want to talk about potentially signing Yannick Ngakwe. So, Bleacher Reports' Brad Gagne listed the Falcons as a team in play for Ngakwe. Now, here were the five teams Bleacher Report identified as potential Ngakwe destinations. The Atlanta Falcons makes a ton of sense. Followed immediately by the Chicago Bears, the two worst pass rush teams in football last year. The Baltimore Ravens lost a lot of guys, Justin Houston, Calais Campbell. Plus, he kind of knows a thing or two about playing in Baltimore. Uh, Denver, I can see that. And Jacksonville, another homecoming as well. So, get it done. I mean, I want to see this pass rush unit improve. It got better from last year, but that's not saying a whole lot, right? If you had the second-to-worst pass rush unit in the NFL... I hope you get a little bit better. But adding Ngakwe, a guy who could actually get double-digit sacks, something Atlanta has not seen since Vic Beasley half a decade ago, yeah, I am going to be in on it. Even if it doesn't materialize into playoff wins and it's just a one-year thing, you're better with him than without him. Now, here's what Dave Holcomb from All Falcons said on the same subject. Ngakwe has not only averaged more than nine sacks per year, He's reached at least eight sacks in each of his seven seasons. The model of consistency would be a sight for sore eyes in Atlanta. The Falcons have just 39 sacks total over the past two seasons. So let me hear it. Do you want to see Ngakwe in Atlanta? Yes or no? I would be ecstatic if the Falcons signed him for Falcons fans because this has been a fan base that has been deprived of a true pass rush unit. And no, this is not going to be a multi-year blockbuster signing at this point, most likely. But it's a step in the right direction to at least give the fans something to cheer for on defense that's not an A.J. Terrell interception or a Grady Jarrett sack, which, hey, I like Grady Jarrett, and it's great that he's your sack leader, but also... It's a bit sad that your defensive tackle is the number one pass rusher on your team. Ngakwe, over the last four years, in case you don't know, has been the model of consistency. Like we just read, never going below eight sacks a season. Now, he does have a pretty low pass rush win rate and pressures, which kind of means in layman's terms, he gets sacks, but that's kind of all he does. Like, he's good for nine and a half pressures all year. He's not a constant disruptor. Meaning throughout the game, not saying he takes game, takes plays off, but he's not a great run stopper. And he's probably still unsigned at this point because outside of the nine and a half sacks, you're not seeing a lot of hurries and pressures and knockdowns and things like that. When we look at the Falcons defensive line, though, it's got good pieces. It's got a great piece in Grady Jarrett. It's got a good piece in David Onyemata. And it's got a veteran piece in Calais Campbell. The last thing we're needing here is a nice rotation, right? Because if something happens to one of those guys, Eddie Goldman all of a sudden coming back from retirement is supposed to come in and play some serious snaps in the NFL. Like, I'll believe it when I see it. Adding Ngakwe to this defense is chef's kiss. I mean, to get the true rotation and have fresh legs, but also have a guy who could actually get double-digit sacks, even if, again, it's just for one season and it does not work out long-term or something, 
I don't care. I am prepared to get hurt again, but I want to see this fan base at least see some sort of decent pass rush, and you can't convince me that this pass rush unit is better without Ngakwe. He is not stealing any precious snaps or uh, reps from any young defensive lineman. Like, Zach Harrison was the only pass rusher they added in the draft, and he's just a rookie, and I don't see him having a major role this season anyway. So, with that being said, I do have one quick thing to note. Atlanta is currently at 90 players. If they want Ngakwe, I am sorry, but the 90th man on this roster will make room for him. That's not going to get in the way of them signing him, but they do have to release someone. So that does uh, somewhat enter the equation for Fontenot and Smith. That's going to do it for us on this edition of Falcons Today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that sub button if you like today's show and you want more Falcons news and rumors content all off season long.